Hi, I'm Christopher Dunnigan. This is HandmadeInVermont.com, and today we are going to be talking about Hubberton Forge finishes. We have a lot of ground to cover on this, so uh, the most important thing for you guys to do is if you are on YouTube, go to HandmadeInVermont.com and click on the Finishes Help Guide. It's midway down on the left-hand side. The same screen, you can watch the same video, is going to be there. And if you guys are on that page already, we're going to scroll down and you're going to see a chart. And that chart is going to have a bunch of finishes on that. And we're going to be talking about it in a second. I'm going to be referencing that chart in this video. I'm going to be going back and forth and kind of showing you the differences between heavy forging, not heavy forging, um, and how that can look on different types of finishes. And some of those pictures have a letter A on them, an A, and some have a letter B on them and those are going to be referenced again in that video. You can also click on that uh, chart and you can see a lot of samples of, of different Hubberton Forge fixtures and whatever finish you guys just clicked on. So um, we're going to be talking about indoor fixtures first and the finishes that go on indoor fixtures. And that includes hot steamy bathrooms <clears throat> and then after that we're going to be talking about outdoor finishes and the finishes that go on fixtures that go outside. So let's dive into what is forging to begin with. A lot of people, you know, they just don't know. You know they, well, they maybe know. So forging is the bending of metal under heat and pressure. So this is part of a Corona uh, fixture. This is probably a Corona, uh, either a semi-flush or possibly a pendant. So to get this metal, <clears throat> including this is the stasis, bottom of the stasis floor lamp that's actually in that photograph on the finishes help guide, that chart. This is the, the piece that you see. Uh, this is a dahlia. We're going to be kind of talking about that too. So to get these pieces of metal to bend like this, they had to be heated up to make them soft enough to make them pliable enough to bend. And that's the whole point of forging. And when you forge iron, and most of the interior fixtures are iron. There are some aluminum ones, and we'll kind of touch on that in a second. But the, the, the majority of fixtures on, on the inside of Hubberton Forge fixtures are going to be forged iron and when you do forge iron what can happen is there's a molecular change that can happen it doesn't necessarily have to happen because humidity in the air the water vapor in the air is going to play a part in this is as these pieces are cooling what can happen is there's a molecular change that can form uh, on the uh, it's called scale or slag on the surface it's that kind of modeling that you see I don't know if you can probably can't really see it on this piece. You can't see it on this piece because this has an opaque finish. But you can definitely see it on here. And I could probably even turn this around a little bit for you so you can see it in different ways. So like I said, the, the water vapor in the air can make a big change in this. So things that are being uh, made in the middle of the summer when it's really humid can be a little different than things are made in the middle of the winter when we don't have as much humidity in the air. Um, that's just the, the nature of the beast. It's a natural thing. You can't control it. It just happens. But what you can control is how much you see it based on using different finishes to kind of hide it or kind of make it more evident. How's that sound? So when you're on our site, like I said, when you're looking at those A's, you can see there's some translucent finishes. And translucent finishes are going to be a window to the metal. Now, this is dark smoke, I believe. Yep. And so dark smoke is a translucent finish. Mahogany, bronze, dark smoke, and burnished steel. They're semi-transparent, translucent. They're a window to the metal, which means that if you have that scale or slag on there, you're going to be able to see parts of it. Now, different fixtures have different um, parts on them, obviously. Sometimes they have the big, the big piece like this. They might have, um, on the Coronas, you have, this is the heavy forging, but the part that goes on the ceiling, which is the canopy, <clears throat> this is flat. And this didn't need to be forged because we know that forging is the bending of metal, and this just needed to be flat. So it never had to be heated up to make it look like this. Same deal with all, you know, the, all the telescoping rods that Hubberton uses in their pendants, they didn't need to be heated up as well. So when you look at that chart and you see the A's and the B's, the things that didn't need to be heated up to be heavily forged are going to be more consistent with the B for boy most of the time. Remember, this is, this is a, there's a range of variants in all this. So most of the time they're going to be more consistent and more uniform. Meanwhile, a lot of the heavily forged pieces may, most of the time, have those kind of modeling. So that's that's what you see in that picture on, on the chart, in those three larger uh, images when they have the A's on them. 
<clears throat> now we're going to talk about the opaque powder coats. Opaque, you can't see through them. They get you to a very specific place, and that's going to be things like gold, soft gold, vintage platinum, the white, natural iron, black. I'm not sure if I missed anything. Um, anyway, so this is the bottom of a dahlia. And you can see how beautiful this is. This is a lot of heavy forging, and it kind of goes down like that. So this is the new, this is the gold finish, and the gold is an opaque finish. And if you can see on here, I can actually see some bumps here, here and there. That is that scalar slag, but you can see there's no difference in the color variation. There's no lighter and darker areas. It's just just gold like this. So you know, there's going to be different fixtures and different finishes that are going to look, you know. The all, all over tone is going to be pretty much the same. And like I said, white, natural iron, black, <clears throat> gold, vintage platinum, soft gold. And then going back to other fixtures and parts, we know that, oops, sorry about that. These, these kind of parts and a lot of the kind of like straight lines that didn't need to be, things that didn't need to be forged are normally going to be more consistent with the pitcher with the B on it for boy. So the kind of the beauty of Hubbardson Forge is, you know, you're here because you want these things to be unique and different, and they will be. So, you know, this floor lamp is going to look different than the floor lamp made a week later. However, you know, there is a there is a somewhat of a consistency, yet each one is individual on its own. So, that kind of covers the differences between the opaques and the translucent. Um, why don't we get into outdoor fixtures for a second? Sure, if there's anything I forgot about the indoor stuff. Scroll down now to um, keep going down on that page, and you're going to see new coastal outdoor finishes. So the deal with with um, outdoor stuff, and this is the top of a Mason outdoor fixture. So all the outdoor stuff is aluminum, and when you forge aluminum, aluminum doesn't do this kind of thing. It doesn't actually produce anything on the surface when it's cooling against the humidity in the air. It just always stays the same. Um, so when you actually have these aluminum things, it doesn't make sense, well, for, to begin with, it doesn't make sense to put a translucent finishes, finish on them because you're never going to be able to see um, any of this. It would never come through anyway. So Hubbardson has these what are called new coastal finishes. And what they are, they're heavy epoxy baked powder coats. And the reason for that is, to begin with, aluminum holds up better than anything else outside. When you go to any air, airport in the world, you're going to see those jet airliners all over the place. Those are aluminum. They're light. They're, they're extremely strong. Aluminum is very durable. And it holds up great outside. But pair that with Hubberton Forge's new coastal epoxy baked powder coats and, and you can see that the whole fixture when it goes through the finish line is encapsulated in this heavy shell of epoxy powder coat and because of that Hubberton Forge is probably the only lighting uh, line in the entire world that I know of that has a limited lifetime warranty on all their outdoor fixtures. And most of you who guys are who are building on oceanfront, who have lived on the oceanfront before, have been replacing outdoor fixtures for a long time because they just corrode. Hubbardton Forges, these things are going to hold up, and they have a limited lifetime warranty. You can see on their website, on the very bottom of their site, so go to HubbardtonForge.com, scroll down to the bottom of the site, click on it, and it's going to show you the limited lifetime warranty, all the parameters about it. It's for residential use only. It actually covers both inside and outside, but it really shows you they're standing behind their fixtures, and these epoxy powder coats are just dynamite. They, they're beautiful to look at. You know, they're always going to be uniform. You're not going to have these lighter and darker areas. That's fine. The fixture itself, you know, the design kind of takes over from there. But um, the fact that these things can hold up beautifully for the rest of your life and become heirloom quality pieces is what you guys are looking for. That's part of the reason you're here. So um, I don't know if I should circle back to anything. Um, again, so indoor fixtures, outdoor fixtures. Um, a lot of decorators, interior designers, and architects will often ask us for finished chips. But you and I both know that finished chips are flat. You know, they're flat like this, and they're not forged. So we don't give out finished chips. And the reason we don't give out finished chips is um, designers were actually getting chips um, in the past from Hubbardton Forge that were flat. Their customers were getting, were purchasing fixtures like this, and they didn't look like that chip. And um, they were none too thrilled. So... Um, because of that, it, it doesn't make sense to send out finished chips. Um, so we have this video instead to kind of guide you through this whole thing. 
So why don't we just jump back into those finishes for a second. So if we're talking about um, the translucent finishes and we're talking about mahogany, you know, all, you know, bronze, dark smoke, all that stuff, I'm going to kind of walk through them one by one and we're going to talk about each one. So if you're looking at that chart, mahogany is a really dark copper. It's very, very dark. It, it has a small suspension of little tiny copper particles. And the more light that hits it, the more you're going to see that dark reddish copper. <clears throat> but, but from away, it almost looks black. It's a very subtle, subtle finish, and it's very dark. Kind of think like Gentleman's Club, the Union Club in New York City, you know, the guys smoking cigars in the big leather chairs with all the mahogany uh, fireplaces and stuff around them. It's got that feeling to me. It's very old world, very rich. Um, it's a beautiful finish. Um, and it's very dark. That's our, that's our uh, dark copper one. It's called mahogany. Moving on to bronze. Bronze is going to be a very dark finish as well. It'll have a suspension of little golden particles in it that react to light. So again, the more light that's going to hit something, the more you're going to be able to see it. So when you see things like canopies, you know, this is a canopy, a canopy that's on the ceiling and you have a fixture that's throwing a lot of light up, this will actually look more gold than some of the parts that are kind of uh, in silhouette on the fixture. So mahogany, ma we did mahogany, now we're doing bronze. Bronze is our dark gold one. Moving on, dark smoke <clears throat> is basically the most authentic, you know, as far as forging goes. If there were no finishes, everything would basically look like dark smoke. I call it a dark champagne with an underlying gray. And what that is is a, a very rich, dark finish, but it's warm. So you have these kind of brazen, browns and gray tones working together, and it's, it's a really beautiful finish. <clears throat> the bronze and dark smoke are our best-selling finishes for those two reasons. A lot of people are trying to match up their bronze to, like, uh, uh, hand-rubbed bronze knobs and that kind of stuff. You don't have to match up all your things. You know, you kind of want your forging to be forging. You want your wood to be wood. You want your stone to be stone. You want your things to be what they really are. And trying to match things up can really be overthinking things. Just a little word to the wise there. So moving on from that. So we know we have um, mahogany. We have bronze. We have dark smoke. And burnished steel is going to be the more bright, contemporary, dove gray silver. It's also going to be a translucent finish. So you're going to have the modeling on some parts of things uh, most of the time. But we know that those gonna, are going to be our more translucent finishes, and that's the kind of dovish gray one. It's the most contemporary out of the translucents. So moving on to the rest, we know we have <clears throat> natural iron. Natural iron is kind of a, a pewter with almost like little pitted marks, like little hammer marks. That was around, that's been around for like 40 years. That was developed for, for Hubbardton Forge customers way back in the day when they were doing colonial twist basket chandeliers. And there's still a lot of you out there that are looking for that kind of thing. So don't rule out natural iron. It's a, a very a cooler, dark pewter with almost little hammer marks to it. Black is black. It's a true black. If you guys are doing an Adirondack Lodge or a, a rustic home, like a log house, that may be where you want to go because you're trying to match up to other parts of the house, like the um, stairway railings or the fireplace surrounds, that kind of stuff. So, and actually, this is black. So, there you go. And then moving on from there, we have, let's see, we have natural iron, we have black, we have um, gold, and here's our gold, and it's a true gold, it's, you know, very in style right now, very cool. Um, vintage platinum is going to be, you know, like your, your grandmother's platinum ring. It is very, very bright, it's very contemporary, it's um, probably the most contemporary uh, finish in the entire line, but it is a very bright silvery almost like a white silver, call it that. And then we move on from there, we have soft gold, which is, um, it's, it's almost the same thing as platinum, but just kind of warm it up with a little bit of a, a yellow tinge to it, and that's going to be the same. When you, when you see them apart, you can't actually tell what they, like, they both kind of look like vintage platinum. When you get them together, you can really see the difference. So it's kind of important. As a matter of fact, wait right there. So I can do this. Check this out. Okay, so this is vintage platinum. This is the spires from the cityscape. So this is vintage platinum. This is soft gold. And when you have them apart, like I said, when you have them apart, you can't really tell the difference so much. They both kind of look silvery. Get them together, and you, and you should be able to tell the difference between these guys. So, and these are aluminum, FYI. Um, these, this is called the decoration, <clears throat> the decoration in the cityscape. And then the frame of it is actually going to be in one of the other finishes. <clears throat> Losing my voice there, sorry. Anyway, but this is a great way to show you that. So uh, moving on from there, you have um, uh, the white 
which is a true white. If that, and that's for people that want, like, you know, maybe you have a Miami, Miami condo and you're looking for everything to be white. That's cool, too. Hubbardton also has these other finishes for Vermont Modern. It's going to be, like, things like aqua and red and I think there's a silver. Those are all opaques, too. You can go over to their website and you can see those. <clears throat> Just at, uh, FYI, if you're doing those Vermont Modern fixtures and maybe you guys don't want aqua, don't want red, I can often do a lot of the Hubbardton Forge other finishes as a custom on that Vermont Modern stuff, so kind of keep that in mind um, just so you don't rule those out just because you can't get a finish you think you can't get. Adds a little time, adds a little money, non-returnable, but I can often do those kind of things. So I think that kind of covers everything the best. Um, going down to those outdoor finishes, the coastals, you can see they kind of mimic the, the indoor ones. There's some of them that aren't available, like you can't do, there's no coastal vintage platinum or um, I think they're might be a coastal goal, but you'll be able to see if there is one. But there's enough down there to kind of cover you for what you want to do. Any questions, let me know. Thanks for stopping in, and I hope I um, opened your eyes on Hubbardton Forge finishes. Have a great day. Bye-bye.